Translating a fight from manga panels into an animation isn't always easy to do well. Manga and anime are two different mediums with different strengths and weaknesses. In a fight, many manga rely heavily on cool singular panels that could be framed on a wall. These still images are the pages that you linger on. They have a lot of detail and are made to capture one action in a single and memorable page. Examples of these are the final attack in Deku vs Muscular, Naruto's first Rasengan against Pain, and Lee's first punch on Gara. A lot of mangaka use these in their fights, but this translates poorly into anime. In an animated fight, these panels are frozen on for a few seconds, regardless of how accurate it is to the manga. Using this technique in anime isn't effective. Instead of being an anime, it makes the fight look like a moving manga. Of course, if the characters are actually supposed to stop like that in a panel, like a sword clash, then doing this isn't a problem. What makes a good anime fight is different from what makes a good manga fight. An animated fight should always be moving. Instead of freezing the frame, the whole scene should be animated out. When Deku lands the final blow on Muscular, the panel that replicates the manga is the problem. While it may look nearly the same, this one image lasts for around 3 seconds, with only some background details slightly moving. Naruto's Rasengan has basically the same problem. Not only is there no animation to connect the cut to his Rasengan, but the shot lasts for nearly 4 seconds, again with only small details moving. A good example of how a panel like this should be translated is in Lee's punch. In the manga, Lee had already punched Gara, and Gara is flying back. In the anime, Lee's fist is shown making contact with Gara's face before sending him back. The camera angle then switches to show Gara flying, hitting the ground, and sliding. The anime never stops the characters to perfectly replicate the manga. The characters almost never stop moving throughout this scene. Instead of freezing, the animators filled in the gaps of action before, during, and after the page. Levi vs. The Beast Titan also uses this trick for similar panels. In the manga, when Levi attacks the Beast Titan, he is shown preparing to strike in one panel and behind the Titan in the next, and in the third, the Titan's arm is chopped up. The anime fills up these gaps and shows the entire scene with Levi spiraling down his opponent's arm with a dynamic camera angle. In summary, a manga is a comic, so it can rely on frozen shots, but an anime is animated, so it needs to be constantly moving, even if that requires a decrease in accuracy to the source material. An anime shouldn't focus on how good a single frame looks, but how the frames put together as a whole looks. One ugly frame can ruin a manga fight, but not an anime one. The range of movements or fluidity a manga fight can convey is limited compared to an anime one. A manga also can't afford to waste panels on showing flashy attacks and movements and is forced to only show what is most important. While some manga like Soul Eater or Magi have found ways, it is still a lot less fast than what an anime can do. This is where anime only scenes come in. Since an anime only scene is loosely based or isn't based on any panels, the freedom the animators have is almost infinite. This allows the animators to include amazing choreography. So many minute details can be added in and take up less than a second. This can make a fight feel more fluid and less stiff. In the final fight between Naruto and Sasuke, the entire first section was completely anime only and arguably the best part. In Soul Eater, the initial exchange between Maka and Jack the Ripper is anime only and is also the most memorable part of the fight. The many extra scenes in Stein vs Medusa are beautiful and enhance the battle. Trying to recreate any of these scenes in a manga would take up and waste so many pages, while the anime executes these scenes in seconds. The last thing an anime can do to adapt a manga fight is Sakuga. This is when the animation spikes up in quality and or when the animator decides to add in their own personal flair. Sakuga can be used on scenes from the manga or anime only scenes. Anime only sections of fight tend to have Sakuga. This gives individual animators a chance to show off their talent, and it provides a unique feel to the fight, grabbing viewers' attention with a change in art and animation. In conclusion, a greater focus on animation and continuous movement, complemented by choreography and cinematography that can only be done in animation, is what should be utilized when adapting a manga fight to an anime. This is simply my own opinion. What do you think is necessary for turning a manga fight into a good anime fight? Thank you for watching. You can follow me on social media and please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe.